Improvements to workshop efficiency. The stickers have landed. The skull card giveaway results. How Stanley came to life. And the bagpipe build is about to start. It's the end of August and not a lot's been happening in the workshop. Unfortunately, life's been getting in the way of it. But one project I did film was the Scissor Action microphone mount. The video is live now, so do check that out if you've not done so already. And the microphone mount is just one of the projects designed to increase the efficiency in this small workshop. Because work lights can now be attached to the ceiling, there's now a power supply up there, so no cables are hanging down to get caught up on. They're all kept tidily out of the way using some hooks. I've also made an extension for the camera arm and added a second track on the ceiling so I can get even better camera angles and closer shots when I'm filming these videos. I've also been upgrading the storage space. My assembly bench sits on the table saw, but the space under the table saw wasn't used very well at all. The legs of the stand made the space pretty much unusable. So now I've built a new stand on casters that the table saw sits on, making the space below more user friendly. And I can get a lot more junk, I mean equipment stashed away underneath so the table saw can still move around the workshop without any problems. While I was on a roll I built a new stand for the lathe. Again on casters to make it mobile and make better use of the space underneath. A couple more hung boxes have been built. One for the glue gun and one for the trim router. These boxes hold the tool and the accessories. So if I'm working out on a site somewhere, I can just lift the box off the wall and take it with me, knowing I have all the bits and pieces for that machine. So things have been going on when I've had the opportunity to get out here, but the microphone mount is the only one that I've filmed because the others aren't anything special really. For those who watch my videos, you'll already know that in the 2017 Skull Challenge, I offered 10 of these full-size cards to give away in a draw to any subscriber that left a comment. Now, I have been told that depending upon your privacy settings, I may not know if you're a subscriber or not. Therefore, anyone who's left a comment was entered into the draw, just to be sure. There were 51 of you and earlier on, because I can't fit my computer system in here, I filmed the draw back at the house in the studio. I'm using random.org to generate the numbers and um, here are our 51 contenders. So I need to change the maximum number here from 100 to 51 and then we'll get started. So the first one is 39, that's Chris Logan. Well done Chris, you've won a card. And the next one, 24, that's DIY Man Glenn. Well done DIY Man Glenn, you've got a card as well. And the next one, 16, that's Ray Penner. Oh, well done, Ray. That's Ray, the uh, fidget spinner man. And the next number, 27, Turning Works. Well, it might be bloody awesome, mate, but you've won a card as well. And the next one is 20, that's Takis Kalios. Well done, Takis. There's a card coming to you. And the next one, 25, is the Bungling Woodworker. 
that's uh, that's the bungling woodworker done. Uh, 48. Oh, well done, John Clothier, the woodworking shed. There's a card coming to you. 38 is the next one. That's Rick Haviland. Well done, Rick. Um, the next one is 19, Ricky Grossman. Well done, Ricky. There's a card for you as well. And the last one is 43, Heart DGS. So you're a winner too. So that concludes the uh, the draw. Thanks to all of you who have entered. If you're a winner, well done. Email me your details and I'll get a skull card out to you pronto. The cards are blank, so you can write anything you want in them. And I sell these cards at £2 each plus postage, so you're getting a treat. Now, regular viewers to my channel will know that I cannot be serious about anything. And I always include some form of stupidity in each video. No more than a minute or so ever makes it into the final cut, so not as to put off or offend all those viewers that have had their sense of humour surgically removed at puberty. But one clip has caused a sensation. I have had more comments regarding Stanley the Clamp than any other clip, and most of you want to know just how he was animated. So. Here's a quick look at how Stanley the Clamp was brought to life. Very early on a summer's morning, some lengths of plain timber were divided up into one centimetre divisions. My first thoughts were to hang the clamp on strings, as they would be easy to mask out later on in post-production. But this would not be firm enough, so thin strip wood was used. Bolts were hot glued onto the back side of the clamp to which the strips of wood were fitted. The nuts were tightened down just enough to allow easy movement but very little wobble. The film set, my back garden, and the framework were protected from direct sunlight with a marquee and then the filming started. Stanley was moved centimetre by centimetre, step by step, frame by frame. It was a long job and each second of action took about an hour to shoot. Nearly 900 images were taken and each scene was filmed twice just in case I'd made a mistake and not noticed until I'd broken down the set and moved on to the next sequence. When all the images are viewed in succession we get movement but there's still a lot of work to do. Grass was disturbed by the wind and the light was constantly changing. To get round this, a reference shot was taken of the background. Then, every frame was edited by removing the original background and the frame holding Stanley in position. This reference background was painted in in its place. So now when we look at the scene again, the scenery remains the same and does not distract from the action. In post-production, the colour was adjusted, camera movement added, atmosphere is created by adding a soundtrack, and Stanley is in action. For those interested, Stanley has negotiated a contract to appear in my Christmas special build, which is going to be a cracker, so don't miss it. I have a few questions in for this edition. Sent to me through either YouTube comments, private message, Instagram, Facebook um, or email. And the first one is from Professor Pete. Can you demonstrate making silicon gaskets that you showed us in the July vlog? Yes, I can, but not in this vlog. 
Your question came in a bit too close to the deadline for filming a how-to for this edition, but I will do a separate video for it very soon, because other people have been asking about it as well. I notice you do not have any adverts over your videos. No, I don't generate revenue through advertising. If I had, like, a gazillion subscribers, I would imagine all those thousands of clicks would add up to something worthwhile. But, to be honest, for what I would earn, it's just not worth the hassle of having a revenue account and, and all the admin that goes with it. I would rather make something in the workshop than sit at a computer. And I only need to sell one item and I would have made more than thousands of clicks on adverts anyway. You never reply to any comments on your Valentine challenge video. Why? Um, yeah, that... That was a tough video to make and while I appreciate all the kind comments and feedback and support that everyone gave, I just couldn't reply. Next question. You said in Wood Turner's 10 questions you were going to make bagpipes. Yes indeed I did and yes I am. Not your traditional style of bagpipes. I have lots of those already, and according to my neighbours, I don't need another set of Highland pipes. The type of pipes I plan to make are the more obscure sets that have been lost to antiquity. And the first set I'm going to make are the Swedish pipes. They exist just... They've been brought back from near extinction and popularised by a handful of people. And here is Vicky Swan, just one of those people. This is the amazing Vicky Swan. She studied at the Royal College of Music on the double bass. She also plays various types of bagpipes, flute, recorder, piano, nickel harper. She's brilliant. If she was not already spoken for, and I was a fortnight younger, I'd marry her in an instant. And here, she's taken time out to demonstrate the style and sound of the Swedish pipes. They will be my first pipe project, but it involves more than just turning the wood. Along the way, I'll have to make the bag, um, make the reeds, build the bellows, all the trimming, the seasoning, and, and oh yeah, I'll have to learn how to play them too. So if you want to come along on that journey, I will be serializing the build on this channel. If you're a bagpipe hater, and I can understand why not. The colour of the thumbnails will be tartan. No, no, red. Just, just red. If you're a bell clicker, don't unclick the bell. I'll add the words bagpipe build to the title. So when you get a notification um, and you're one of the few people who hate bagpipes, you can just ignore it on your computer. Or if you use a tablet or a phone, just swipe to the left. Or, or is it swipe to the right? You know what I mean, anyway. But there's more information about the bagpipe build coming very soon. Have you thought about sponsorship? Yes, I have. But I like to make videos the way I make videos in the content and the storylines and the humour, just the way I like to create them. Having a sponsor on board starts putting restrictions and persuasions on you, and also to produce content on a weekly basis, which is what most of them want, I feel 
for me, my creativity wouldn't keep up with that because I'm old and I think slow and I feel my quality of content would suffer. I still work part time doing a job that I love and, and that pays the bills. Anyway, that's enough thick bloke. That's your third question. Give somebody else a go, eh? Stephen, great project. Suggestion, mute the tool noise. It was hard to hear your voice over it. What is this? Get it, Stephen Week? Yes, Steve, I have made a note of that. You're the only one to comment on it, but I will take it on board and watch for it in the future. It's something that bugs me in modern filmmaking. I have started more narration in the build videos as of a few viewers with a visual impairment. So that's the reason for more talking and more close-ups of the process. But yes, yeah, Steve, I will watch for background sounds cloud in the talky bits in future. As I mentioned in my last vlog, my stickers were in the pipeline and now they've landed. Don't they look awesome and wouldn't one look really cool on your workshop wall? I've already sent some out and if you would like one or would like to do a sticker exchange, just send me your details and I'll send you one out in the next batch. I'll also give a shout out to anyone who sends in a sticker as a thank you. I've had some stickers sent to me already, so let's take a look. Mike Atkinson is a specialist in pen making and is active in a number of woodworking groups on Facebook. If you're into pens, he's your man. Paul Lockwood's passions are wood turning and scroll sawing and he posts regular projects weekly on his YouTube channel. Shogun Jimmy is a maker and produces a wide range of awesome projects, well worth a visit. John Clothier has just built a new workshop from scratch and currently experimenting with stains and colours on his wood turning projects. Dirk Gibbons, aka Sumo's Projects, resides on the proper side of the planet and his down-to-earth projects are aimed towards the DIY enthusiasts and do check him out, some of his projects are brilliant. G'day guys, welcome to Sumo's Projects. I can't believe that Sumo's Projects lives only about 90 miles away from where I lived when I was in Oz. 90 miles may seem a long way in this country, but in Australia that's just a round trip to the supermarket. Well, that's about it for this vlog. There's still a musical project to come, not, not bagpipes, and a magical build. So do make sure you have that bell notification switched on so you don't miss them. Now, normally the vlog would end here. But a while ago, Leslie, who wishes to remain anonymous, oh, sorry, Leslie, <laughs> um, she sent me this woodworking apron. She's even embroidered my 8x6 logo on it and added a pocket for me glasses. How cool is that? So thank you very much, Leslie. I'm, uh, I'm touched. I can't wear it, though, because I'll get it dirty. Thank you.